After the propaganda triumph at his trial, Hitler set out to write the Bible of National Socialism. He dictated much of the text here in his cell to his faithful follower, Rudolf Hess. On Saturday evenings, the audience around as Hitler read out the completed chapters to them. It was a whole on the great obsessions which accompanied Hitler's political thought. The Jews, racism, living space for the German people, the evils of communism and parliamentary democracy. But it also includes Hitler's views on a variety of other topics, ranging from boxing to syphilis. Though Hitler was a great speaker, he was an indifferent writer. The amazing appeal Hitler was later to exercise was based not on the turgid prose of Mein Kampf, but on his mastery of the spoken word. After prison, the leader, or Führer as he now called himself, had a new political strategy. Instead of planning another coup, he aimed to win power at the polls. Hitler's obsession with the Jews and living space in Eastern Europe could never have given him mass support. What was to win him millions of votes was instead his vision of a great national revival. Hitler's election opportunity came with the onset of the Depression. In a few years, one in three of the labor force was out of work. The Nazis claimed to have the answer. Ilse Wendel was a church social worker during the Depression among the unemployed in the Berlin slums. By 1932, German industrial production had fallen by almost half. Among the unemployed in the slums, she found a pervading sense of hopelessness about the future. It's a poverty which still strikes you here, very much indeed. You can see how destructed the walls are, you can see there. The houses were so near to each other that the women talked to each other from the windows. What I do miss are children. When I came here, there were many children playing around, dozens of them. The despair was so terrible as I can't describe it. You had everywhere beggars, wherever you went in Berlin, you had beggars. The people came onto the courtyards and were singing and singing just for, for a penny. The democratic political parties offered no solution. To millions of Germans, the only hope was Adolf Hitler. I supported Hitler because he, after having seen all that depravity, all that poverty here, was the only one who could do social justice to the people here. They were in a terrible misery. Using the slogan, the Führer over Germany, Hitler became the first politician to use the aeroplane to campaign in several different cities on the same day. His message was simple, only he could save Germany. By 1932, at the depth of the depression, the Nazis, with over a third of the vote, were easily the largest political party, and easily their greatest asset was Hitler's oratory. He had that ability which is needed to make people stop thinking critically and just emote. The ability derived from his readiness to throw himself totally open, to, to appear, as it were, bare and naked before his audience, to, to tear open his heart and display it. <laughs> Before the audience hear his messianic vision of a great national revival, Hitler builds up the suspense by keeping them waiting, often for an hour or more. At the speaker's platform, Hitler adds to the tension by keeping his audience waiting again. He does what no politician nowadays would dare to do. For a full minute, he stays silent.
When he feels he's gauged the mood of the audience, he starts, but slowly and quietly. He had an actor's ability to throw on a few extra generators and suddenly become absolutely charged with energy. It wasn't as though he was using words, it's as though the emotions came direct without words almost. There was a rawness about it to power. In uns selbst allein liegt die Zukunft des deutschen Volkes. Wenn wir selbst dieses deutsche Volk entvorführen durch eigene Arbeit, durch eigenen Fleiß, eigene Entschlossenheit, eigenen Trotz, eigene Beharrlichkeit, dann werden wir wieder den Vorstein, genau wie die Väter einst auch Deutschland nicht das Schild erhielten, sondern selbst den schaffen mussten. Nobody has ever had this power to move audiences. And this is not just um, the man in the street, this is many German intellectuals who are moved by this appeal and stared by this extraordinary self-confidence in this man. And what he says is the way he says it. You come back to that. And that's a very disconcerting thing for people. They want somehow or other to explain it away. But it's there. <laughs> 